Hey guys, sorry for the lack of update. On the left side is my old system where the Snyder and the battery box was sitting. And of course, this is where I parked my car and I had a very few close call. Decided to move everything on this wall, which is kind of a mistake, but I don't think I have much of a choice. I rather prefer the uh, battery box on this side and then the system on this side but then I'll have to run a big cable right across the door so it wasn't really much of an option but as you can see why it is a mistake to mount the inverter on this side it is because the grow watts inverter for once it is so loud um, this is just the fan for the charge controller this is not even the fan for the inverter so this is like a quarter of the noise of what it will usually make if the inverter is on or there's a big low it will you know sound about four times louder than that it will rev up the turbo fan and it's really loud um, the problem i'm having is the room behind this wall is a spare bedrooms and it, it actually when the fans kicks on it actually vibrates the wall and and the noise you can definitely hear it and you're gonna struggle if you you know try to sleep at night so this is my sub panel and this because this is an off-grid system i pull all of the circuits that i want to use on my solar into all of this breaker here and put it into this sub panel and then route it let's see 60 amps uh 240 volt split phase uh main line going to into this uh sub panel but it, it just goes straight here going into the pipe and in go all the way down there go into the corner and it goes right into the power distribution box into the inverter some serious power that i'm pulling out of these it's not you know a, a small off-grid system so this is just like light fridge um uh, full side free ton air conditioner condenser uh condenser units um is on here so this is a 30 amps 240 30 amps 240 and then I also have another 30 amps, which is for the dryer, the full size dryer on here. So, um, and then I also just recently put in my Nissan Leaf charging system here. So this is the 20 amps, 120 volts. And then this is 20 amps, 240 volts. Um, so because I'm using this charger, so this is not quite a level two. This is like a level one and a half. So it's charging at 240 volts um, at like 16 amps. So that's like 3.6 or 3.8 kilowatts or so. Um, so I was able to charge my, my Nissan Leaf uh, at that rate. So that, at that rate, it's not so bad. I fully charge my Leaf in like, you know, three to four hours on, on, the, uh, on that 240. So it's not bad. So, I mean, I have a lot of low power, you know, heavy loads on here. Um, so I can tell you that I can run both of my air conditioner at the same time starting and stopping uh, both of my big air conditioner at the same time so they pull about continuously they'll pull about three to four thousand watts and surge they'll do like you know 100 amps uh, at 240 so uh, there's no doubt that the grow watts can handle a very high amount of surge um, the only issue is i can only run one of my air conditioners in the dryer at the same time. If the dryer is running first and then the air conditioner, one of them kicks on, that's fine. It's still able to handle it. But if the second air conditioner kicks on, then it's gonna shut off right away. So it, that's just how it is. And there's just an inconvenience case that there's a problem with my system and I need to bypass it and then go back to the grids. So what happened is I just flipped this two breaker. It's a bypass breaker. And that will just put everything on that um, sub panels back into the grid power. Snyder Connex uh, power distribution box. So it's already half all of this. So this side is the AC side and this side is the DC breaker. So this side, that's just a bypass. Um, and then this one is the grid in for the inverter and then um, turn off the grid to the inverter or not. So basically this is a manual bypass. And if I have the grids flipped on for the inverter, and then it will have the, I'll let the inverter do the bypass instead. Total of 10 kilowatt solar array, uh, about 
uh, 7100 watts is going into the uh, grow watts inverter um, it is split into two array because they ha does have two port okay and then the rest 3000 watts is going into this uh, very old and reliable uh, midnight charge controllers and then the solar is coming in from here going into this uh, breaker box so right now this one's for the midnight this one is for the uh, grow watts inverter I have it off right now it was pretty hard to find uh, you know a cheap breaker box that's actually metal but this one is actually metal so that pipe I was telling you about is going for the power it goes down I just put that junction box right later on if I want to run extra wire for whatever reason it would just make it easier to run any wire down from the attic down to that that uh, box and it goes down this conduit goes down to this power distribution box. This is an extra sub panels. Um, I just put this here so I can put an outlet right here because the inverter is mounted so close to the, to the ceiling. It's about 10 inches. That's why I had to do the pipe that's vented into the attic. And this is the cable going down to the battery. Okay, here is the battery bank 84 Nissan Leaf module, which give me a total of rated 42 kilowatt hours um, 14 cells config so uh, seven module in in a series so as you can see this, this is divided in half right here so there's 12 of the module in parallel and then it go from here to here is a series so from here to here that's another series so one two three four five six and then seven Thank you everybody for watching. If you liked the video, please give me a thumbs up and consider subscribing. Thank you so much, guys, as always.